Electric and Water Village areas. The catalyst for our project was a review of the trend of regions promoted in both content and patient satisfaction questionnaires on both sides. Women highlighted the low waiting times, environmental issues including uh, heating and signage, lack of crops, particular concerns in relief. Raised in relation to processes at the multidisciplinary team by a medical clinic in Great Allen, where women were required to review by a number of professionals at one single appointment. So we decided to establish uh, an improvement team on both sides, with facilitation provided by the continuous improvement team within the trust to address these issues. So I'd like to introduce you to our quality improvement teams. Um, we have a team of Daisy Hill and the team of Great Allen. I'm very pleased to be accompanied by Sister John Martin today from the Big Allen team, who is very much a part of this work. So we wanted to build a continuous improvement capacity and capability and confidence within the team to identify the cha champions to lead on the project, with myself as the lead my bike and the senior management team for support within the charity department. Our overall aim was to begin the, to improve sorry, the overall home experience and to provide staff to identify opportunities to initiate and sustain change. Sustain change. Our two focus groups overall then were our staff and the women who use our service. To assist the building capacity improvement, quality and capability, we made available an e-learning package, which has three distinct modules, process flow analysis, standard operating procedures and problem solving. We made this e-learning opportunity available for the staff identified within the project and it was accessible from work and at home. I know a number of you in clinical practice on the front line might feel that it's a very positive thing that it's available from home and some of our staff initially agree with that. However, they weren't necessarily convinced at the start that the project um, progressed the benefits and the relevance of the teaching available um, was very beneficial to the members and they proactively shared it with their other colleagues. We then undertook a military and support role, support staff role and responsibilities exercise. And the slide shows the staff in Daisy Hill undertaking this project uh, this process themselves. And an afternoon where they wrote down each person what they felt their roles and responsibilities were. Um, this review of perceived versus actual roles and responsibilities of all the staff members the were subsequently validated by staff and attendance at other meetings of the project. The following staff, staff groups were involved in the activity, including the sister, the military team, the elderly and caring staff, the attorney support workers, healthcare assistants, um, and myself. This was a very valuable exercise and it was a win for staff because of increased an understanding of each other's roles and responsibilities and improved staff morale. People were very clear of what their responsibilities were afterwards, whilst they may not have been that clearly at the start of the exercise. We progressed then to look at our current systems and processes. And we made use of the process mapping exercise to review the current anti looking and review process. And this allowed the team to review the current anti-electronic patient pathway, identify non value added activities, and by that I mean things like duplication records across the team, having to leave the department to collect labels, having to leave the department to collect documentation and printouts. We identified service improvement opportunities then to address these, such as appropriately placed and accessible equipment, and that even can now stop as well as where the non function device was located. This allows us to maximise the available resources and also look at things like streamlining the military workload in terms of the number of bookings that we have at a particular time, the number of reviews that we have at a particular time. <coughs> Some changes came out of this, which included that we discussed with the staff the staggering of their start times to improve the um, uh, preparation of the client and anticipation of, of, of the busy day. We continued our proactive engagement with the team to widen it out then to all the disciplines involving our obstetrical medical colleagues who were using the, the who were attending the clinic and as the staff team. And we um, initiated a frustration and ideas uh, board. We used these on both sides in the Big Alpha site and the Daisy Hill site, and you can see the examples um, of both there on the slide. This allows the staff, all disciplines, to participate in the frustration ideas board, whereby over a two-week period they were invited to post any issues regarding the department 
as well as ideas for improvement. We bid with openly in staff areas so that other, all staff members of the team could see the frustrations and the ideas of within their own discipline and within the wider team. The tool allowed staff to openly display frustrations and ideas about the department, which led to an increased understanding of each other's roles and responsibilities and generated a lot of discussion within and between disciplines and positively improved communication within the department. A huge number of our staff are female, they have caring responsibilities um, and they have um, young children and elderly relatives. Um, and leave clinics, uh, clinics overrunning impacted largely um, on their outside life, as with other members of the team. But everybody's ability to be able to see that and other examples in terms of frustration really made the team look at the difficulties and the issues that we were facing together. <coughs> so then, to address our service users, our women, we engaged with them in a proactive manner as well. And we did um, a number of surveys with the women at both the Daisy Hill and the Great Appetite to um, ascertain their views. And we asked what did they like best about the clinic and what did they like least about the clinic. And we took this very simplified approach because we didn't want to um, uh, overburden them with um, paperwork and documentation, but also just to give us quick and simple um, answers in terms of how the clinic was impacting on their experience. Um, of attending both sites. And if you look at what they like best, you could look at that and think, well, they're generally, you know, happy and it seems to be running okay. But if you look at what they don't like least is the waiting time. The waiting time, the environment might be too warm, um, those things are there. They were coming across from our guests, they were coming across from our staff, and our women were also following them. We asked them how they felt on a particular day at this particular clinic. And whilst there's large numbers there feeling happy, feeling great, there is worry and there is lonely, and those, those um, responses um, are documented in terms of percentage. So there were women there who weren't feeling happy, who weren't feeling supported, who weren't feeling safe, and we felt that, that was something we needed to address. And if our systems were leading to them feeling that way, it was our responsibility to be advised to address that. In particular, the diabetic athlete at the clinic on the Craig Allen site um, is a very busy clinic. Midwives um, are part of a large team there in terms of diabetic specialists, nurses, metabolic specialists, and um, obstetricians, and um, dietitians. And the staff there are trying to amalgamate all of those different departments into one clinic visit. And generally, it is a very busy clinic. And we want to address issues raised by our complaints, but also to give the opportunity to women attending that clinic to let us know how that's um, affected them. The positive comments were there. Um, today my appointment was much quicker, but there are comments there saying, please explain to the patient the long delay and the waiting time. That patient, that woman is just looking for an explanation. No one that should go to be there for a long time. Patients can, quite, can get quite annoyed when others are taken before them. I was content with my visit today, but it took too long. So those were um, comments coming back from the women directly, highlighting to us again that we have concerns in relation to waiting times. So we have the knowledge, now we have to review it and reorganize it. My team has made great efforts to improve the women's journey to the order in which tasks were taken to reduce the waiting times. That was the primary um, issue for us. We were very aware that the women come to our clinics again and are, have working legs. They have young children, they have caring responsibilities, they have financial concerns. The waiting, uh, increased waiting time is going to impact on how much the women pay in the flower park in a lot of cases, and that was a frustration for people. And uh, having made, being aware of those issues as an advice, we really wanted to do something to make a difference and work with our team. So we reorganised some of our tasks, how we, how we undertook our processes. Um, we streamlined um, our review appointments at staff at the diabetic clinic in particular and reviewed our processes in terms of um, blood CTGs that was required, blood pressure checks and, and uh, urine testing. We made a number of low cost but and no cost changes which made a big difference um, to the women uh, attending the clinic and also to the staff. 
staff. And the complaints and, and the feedback, um, and we called one up to a particular room. We knew which room the one was going to, but the woman didn't know. The number was on the door, it wasn't out on the corridor. Such a simple thing meant that the woman didn't walk up and down the corridor trying to find which room she was going to. So we were surprised at how quickly that impact on the public experience that they had. They didn't feel lost. They didn't feel that we need to have to walk up and down the corridor asking which room I'm supposed to go to. We um, installed a station for the staff to store a specific diabetic time information. Again, this cut down on time of for staff um, looking for information trying to find that uh, someone had moved it from a particular area. We now have a dedicated, dedicated area. For that reason, we also had a whiteboard installed and a clock, um, which made it, uh, made it very obvious when, um, if the clinic was maybe going over a bit, we were making constant reference to um, a visible clock that was there in a dedicated space that people would not have to wait for corners. A, a notes trolley was also secured, which kept the, the women's uh, charts together in the one place. We had a bit of an issue where a chart could be at this station, it could be at another station. We were all, so they were now all centralised in one accessible area. And that's shown there in the slides. Um, we um, advised then that uh, this was in relation to the Daisy Hill site. It was in a very creepy warm, but we, um, if that was going to be an issue, we would have some fan plate in place for there and inform the women regularly attending the clinic that their work was trying to get air conditioning in there. But we were trying to engender comfort for the waiting area because again women were very often under pressure whenever they were coming and um, they had other responsibilities and nobody likes waiting in uncomfortable surroundings. Um, we also managed uh, to identify the need for the service demand to be matched by the military uh, resources. And again, that will um, staggering start convention times for some staff. <coughs> we noticed a significant decrease in the complaints in relation to both um, antenatal clinics. We have increased satisfaction from staff managing the clinics. We have reduced opportunities for clinical risk and critical incidents for them as they have more face to face time with, with the woman. Simple things like the mislabeling of bloods can have um, long term consequences. And to that end, we have increased productivity. We've decreased the waiting times of the clinic, we've improved the ambience of the clinics, um, and we've increased uh, confidence in the waiting time and the waiting order through the installation of an electronic check system. Um, women were unaware that the, um, maybe two or three clinics were happening at the same time, and someone was sitting in the waiting room would take before them and then arrive right before that person. That led to frustration as well. So now that, that confidence is increased in relation to the check in system. In conclusion, both women and staff have benefited from the service improvements implemented at the end of the clinics in both the Creative and Daily Hill Hospital. We have increased the staff confidence also to undertake further service improvement um, modules using the e learning um, processes. And finally, um, we have at this point in our work, we have some recommendations that have been made internally for ourselves, and I'll just share those with you. We want to continue to um, complete our satisfaction surveys. We were doing them twice a year, we may actually do that more regularly. Um, we are going to get air conditioning installed. We are going to take forward the staff ideas and frustration forward exercises through um, <coughs> training and hopefully through scheduling our time, time out routines. So the value of that exercise um, was very high. It really did improve um, communication and understanding of people's roles and the failed miss in terms of people's roles and also the sharing of information in terms of the staff's own experience is very useful in terms of building uh, teams. And again, we will continue to um, promote the service demand and inform the raw strength of staff and the clinic template. And as clinics can change on an ongoing basis, they're not, they're not static um, things that change from month to month in terms of productivity. We need to keep monitoring that and um, ensure that our service provision is responsive to the activity and the service need. Thank you very much for listening.